Space, the final frontier. Space Station Ashland sits on the edge of Federation space with its companion ship, the USS Delamus Christian. The space around them is full of mystery and strange wonders, where secrets are kept and danger lurks around every corner. The crew of the Delamus Christian must navigate treacherous waters as they work to protect the Federation. But as they peer into the unknown, they will discover that the line between friend and foe is not always clear. They will be tested like never before and will face challenges that will push them to their limits. Join us on this adventure as we explore the farthest reaches of space and uncover the hidden truths that lie within the shadows. Tabletop Journeys presents Star Trek Preservations. Before we uh, move on to Ocean, uh, Lacey, did you have any follow-up questions? You had said that there is something that I wasn't able to fully get a grasp on um, that would either come out later or I could ask more questions about now, but I didn't catch exactly what that piece was. Certainly. You gathered the fact that Magro was looking at those three specific areas, mm-hmm. but the connection between those three areas and what they could possibly relate to and what they could do, that's what you're not able to grasp right in this moment. That's something you'd have to ponder, think about. Perhaps it's a check, perhaps it's a conversation with the rest of the team away from the actual scene. But, you know, if we're visually watching this, it would be seen where everybody's showing that and then there'd be a cutaway to each uh, person in the scene as they're watching the expressions. And then you get to look at them saying, huh, that's interesting, kind of look on their face without verbalizing. Yours lingers, and then it cuts to her specifically looking at each of the things, and there's that long, almost exaggerated scene looking at the different things with a little bit flair and the dramatic music. So it's clear that this is important and different and odd and it stands out but there's not words being said in this process so that's kind of visually what you're what's happening here you clocked her doing it and uh you know earlier she clocked tanari scrutinizing her in this particular instance she is uh intently looking at a thing and you're like i gotta i gotta think about that like what what was that all about that's kind of where you were with that perfect thank you you're very welcome and adam What is Ocean's approach to kind of viewing the reactions here? So I am going to feed right into Dave's complication because I'm, I was already going to do this. What I'm thinking about is the fact that she doesn't clock right for me. I'm keeping an eye on her from the perspective of is she moving like a Klingon or, and given the fact that she's intrigued by this medical stuff, I'm wondering if she's augmented. Ooh. And I, and I don't remember the Klingon's take on augmentation because I know the Federation, it has a prohibition on it, but I don't remember if the Klingons do. So this really depends on what beta canon you focus on. So it's an interesting question because I think what we're about to do is set preservations canon on this topic because uh, it has not appeared in the shows very specifically. And what this goes back is to the ye old TOS uh, style Klingons. Uh, you know, the issues that Worf just didn't want to talk about. There are some Beta Canon sources that say what resulted in the Klingons without the ridges was an attempt at bioengineering for potentially augmentation. So the Klingons do have a prohibition about it because it yielded that. 
there is other beta canon that says that's just a separate Klingon species that was in power at the time, or at least the ones that were put out to deal with alien entities like the Federation at the time before they Mm -hmm. really started dealing with the Imperial Klingons. And then with Discovery, there became even additional questions. And now that there's been a slight moving back towards the uh, TNG DS9 Voyager era look that maybe they're hand-waving that the Discovery Klingon look different. And again, it might be just different houses or different sub subspecies, so to speak. Okay. From my perspective, I use a blend of all of that. I do think there's an issue of the ones that were most frequently seen were the ones that were in power at the time or the ones that were basically in charge of said sectors. So there are certain houses that were more frequently encountered than others. There were certainly houses that were in charge and dealing with the Federation Klingon War, a la the Discovery era. But I do feel that the TOS era Klingons were in some fashion attempts at augmentation that did not go well. And while it is not as blatant and in writing as it is with the Federation, there is more of an ostracism involved in Klingon society. So they just don't speak about them all that often. For anybody that knows anything about Klingon history, and your character specifically wouldn't, but this is not a a genocide issue. This is not uh, anything. They're just not the ones that are out in front anymore. They've been relegated to other areas. They have been ostracized, but they are not specifically vilified or whatever. And they were a smaller group of houses anyway. Basically, the Imperial Klingon, so to speak, once the breadbasket of the stars was seen more Alpha Quadrant facing, they took the forefront in expansion in that way. So that's why you started seeing more of them, where the other ones were left to maintain areas that are rarely seen on the backside of the Klingon Empire that look lean more galactic eastward, so to speak. Hmm. There was augmentation. It is not allowed in the Empire anymore. But there were large numbers of Klingons at at one point that were augmented. Okay. With your role and your look towards that, you're trying to see if there's any, quote-unquote, signs of augmentation kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, So I think I would probably need to use medicine for that, but it's not my my strong point. But I would agree. I think this is going to have to be insight medicine. Okay. Which is which is definitely not my strong point. So I'm going to spend the threat for intense scrutiny to get an extra die. Okay. Because what could happen? And I don't think I have a focus for this. No, I don't have a focus for this. Okay. Clandestine operations? I don't want to abuse that, but I'm wondering if that, because that's such a, a an underground thing, if that would come into play. I wouldn't consider it an abuse because it is really about one of the few things, unless you had science focuses in augmentation or genetics yeah, or no. possibly xenobiology i think that's really the only thing like you're just good at noticing things that are supposed to be hidden so i and specifically operatives who like to be hidden and i think yes. that that really applies yeah. in this case because that's kind of the avenue i think you're headed mm-hmm. yes because she's it wouldn't be advertising that so all right uh well, I rolled a four, five, and a nine. Uh, however, none of that is a critical, but that is three successes. Two six, uh, three successes. All right. So, unfortunately, you are not successful in getting any information from her. You get the same information about Volkar. Uh, you don't get any additional information along that range because you needed to hit four to 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 to, to get the goods okay. on uh, yep. Magra. 
I will say, as far as the success with Consequence, you're pretty convinced that there's something definitely about her. Like, she's not on the up and up. You can feel 100% confident in that as to whether or not that's augmentation or, or what the reason for that. You don't know. What you do know is she's definitely hiding something. That's That you can walk away from this particular scene knowing she's hiding something. Teasling! Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah, fair enough. All right. With that, the rest of the tour of the science department goes. It's pretty uneventful. Beyond her init- her looks at variant points during this scene, that was it. When you tour the bridge to close out this scene, she has very little interest in bridge operations. She's following that logic. There's not much more there. Wilkar is clearly much uh, more interested in bridge operations. He asks questions again not trying to get into sensitive areas and this because you guys have all been successful it's very clear that he is aware of sensitive information and and how impolite it is to even ask questions of people and put them on the spot so he really tries not to put you on the spot and this is not a, i don't want to get caught this is this is a level of respect it is very clear now that you've been with him for about an hour as you go through the tour that he respects the federation in general and he respects this ship and its crew in specific and he has a great fondness if not just respect for Tenari based on reputation alone and combined interests. In the course of the tour, if your knowledge of ships came up, he would also have a a fondness for you, Ocean, because he just, he he is clearly about ships and shipbuilding. So if that happened to come up, that would be something he would connect with you on. So as he has a specific connection with somebody, it tends to be, he tends to be a little less formal and a little more polite and open up a bit more. Nice. With that, with the tour over, uh, Najar, the warriors are pretty basic warriors. They seem to be in good spirits. They're not overly aggressive. They're not overly standoffish. They don't really appear to be off-putting in any way or hiding anything in any way. They pretty much are what you are. They are bodyguards for a house leader. You do get a hint that as actual military members that this is crap duty. We're protecting an architect. They don't like it. There's no glory in protecting an architect other than it's good for the empire. At least one of them is really not pleased to do the job, but they respect the institution of the IKS enough that they're going to do their absolute best at the job. So you don't get any idea of any plots or things of that nature. Just people stuff. Guy doing a corporate security gig. Yep. He'd much rather be on the front lines of some expansive operation and doing glorious things. They're happy with whatever accommodations you get. Anything that you wanted to do or ask of them or beyond beyond that uh, general information that you were able to glean? No, once they're settled, the only other thing Najar would do before working on meeting back up with the rest of the command crew would be trying to act on the information sent to him by Lieutenant Commander Ocean about monitoring what systems and things that the our Klingon guests were trying to access through the computer, etc., and putting some security measures in place to do that. Okay. I would say this is going to be creating a trait, general task of two, definitely security task, whether you want to use control or another ability to steer that, and then whatever focus, that choice would be yours based on your approach. So... In his office, by himself, without any other oversight on his part, I think the way that Najar would approach it, because he's been considering this since he witnessed the events with Commander Tobor and the symbiote memories while discovering the artificial intelligence that is behind the Epsilon Protocol, that Najar might straight up type into his terminal something along the lines of... Epsilon AI, are you out there? And literally try to negotiate with it to help protect the ship by monitoring anything these guys do while they're here. Hmm. Okay. Basically, the program will respond that they, and, and in text, it doesn't actually speak to you, but it'll respond with this basic question typed out to you. 
do you consider it an active threat or just something I should be wary of? I think that as the two entities most invested in the security and safety of the ship, that you and I should form a working relationship for all newcomers, all non stationed personnel, anyone on our ship from the Vulcan Jatak who just escaped previously to these Klingon folks to even other Starfleet personnel to specifically keep an eye on what their interest in the Dalamis Christian is and what systems and subsystems of our computer they try to get into and infiltrate because there are a lot of pieces moving and we have no idea what the true allegiance of anyone outside of our crew is I'd like you to use a presence security role unless you feel command would be better but I do think security role would work best in this case you are effectively enumerating and qualifying the need to collaborate in regards to security manners, the nuances you're trying to convince him that he should trust you, for it that it should trust you. Mm-hmm. So definitely, I, I would think and it the has best repl- responded to me in the past, but yep. But I would like you to go ahead and make that role because that is going to determine whether the specific task you're asking engages correctly. In addition to how Epsilon Protocol interacts, with you, DC interacts with you. Can I bid reason security instead of presence, since this is literally a being of logic and I'm using logical arguments and and phrasing to type it out? Yeah, absolutely. I can can be so inclined to to take that. Okay. And what is my difficulty? Because of the previous interactions that you alluded to here, I'm going to say your difficulty has dropped to one. Okay. Since this is an ongoing, potentially an ongoing pact or contract or agreement between the two of us, I'm going to consider it important enough to secure that I'm going to spend a threat for a die. Oh, yeah. I am, however, going to take that threat and one more, and your complication range has expanded. With two threat, I believe that should bring us to 18, 19, and 20. Noted. Okay. All right. So uh, I have gotcha. I, I have three dice, and my results are a one, a one, and an eighteen. But because I used threat and it is a security task, I will re-roll that eighteen with bold security. Good. Good call. Uh, for a seven, so that would be five successes. We are already maxed out on momentum, so you have five momentum in an immediate spend based on the issue at hand. I will give you this information up front. DC will actually come on oh, the, the, the device you're typing into will give the little purple light up indicating that he that DC is active in, in your presence and focused on this conversation versus doing lots of things at once. It's still doing its other functions, but it is focused on this conversation. It is present is what that purple light indicates in this case but he will come to you and say I absolutely agree you're the chief of security and I am your best tool to ensure the security of this vessel I would be happy to make sure that any newcomers are scrutinized and I will now allow you to go ahead and you did a re-roll out of the complication, which would have been ugly because he basically could have created a – you could have created a subroutine that basically said any newcomer should be treated in a similar fashion to Epsilon. But you rolled out of that, so you did not make that more difficult. That said, with all of those successes, you have five momentum and you have some immediate spends. How would you like to spend them? As my answer, I mean, <laughs> aside from getting it to agree, I don't, I can't think of any specifics that I'm going to be able to techno babble my way through. There's now a chart in the main second edition book that techno babble yeah. is there. Oh, huh. I have to check that out. 
Can I spend so two of it to create a trait for the Dalamus Christian of under surveillance or something against these folks that are here? Absolutely. Or newcomers? Yep. Yep. So two, two there. You have three left. They have the under surveillance trait. And tell me again what I can spend momentum on since you just pulled up the chart. Let's see here. You have obtained information. You already did a keep the uh, create trait. And keeping the initiative, reducing time, swift action, minor actions, and don't apply in this scenario. Essentially, more obtain information or bank it in the momentum pool. We're, or, we're already at six, so there's no room for bank. So mm. you basically have four, four points of momentum and the ability to ask questions that pertain to surveillance of these individuals or your interactions with Epsilon Protocol. I have no idea what to ask it about Epsilon Protocol that would relate to what I'm doing right now. And I feel like just trying to get general information about Epsilon Protocol out of it while I was doing this would be disingenuous to the intent and possibly turn the Epsilon What about off. spending spending the remaining momentum for kind of the longer potent, potent trait of Epsilon Trust or the Epsilon Protocol starting to trust you? Okay. That's that's nice. I like that. Good call, Joe. And establishing so, a relationship with the Epsilon Protocol, the, the partnership yeah, or something? I, I will let you use those four bonus momentum for that purpose. Basically, you have Epsilon Trusted as a trait you can put on your character, and that's going to be long-term indefinite unless you do something to lose that trait. So you can just jot that down, and what um, that will do is make... Right any situation where you are trying to convince or perhaps even work in opposition to the protocol, that trait will be one easier for you. Or or it'll actually hear you out. Yeah. And, it, it, and generally, it will start regarding you in a different light than it has previously. You don't have to do what you just did to get the conversation. You right. can just be in a situation, hey, can we talk? <laughs> kind of thing, and he, it will do that. Fantastic. All right. So with that, if there's anything else anybody wants to do, the tour is just about over. People are going to retire. We're going to move to the next scene, which is coming up to – it's going to be about a week later. You're going to be arriving on scene near Outpost 39. Is there anything anybody wanted to do before we close this? And there's a week's travel. So I know there are a couple long-term things that people wanted to act on, so I think I'm going to entertain that, but I'll start with you, Commander Tobor. Yeah, mostly I just, over the week, course of the week, I'm just trying to see if I can't get our guests to let us know what they're doing, why they're going to Station 39, kind of what their, essentially their official mission without revealing too much classified information and having given them the same courtesy about, you know, what brings a Klingon like you all the way out here to the Briar Patch kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So they are pretty... Correction. Vokar is pretty upfront about their mission. He states very clearly there's nothing clandestine about his uh, about the mission, nothing that seems particularly sensitive. Specifically, he is part of a his house representing the Klingon Empire is part of a joint federation operation. Starfleet is involved in almost a secondary fashion. This is more of a Federation Klingon Empire issue than IKS Federation issue, so a civilian side issue, but it is high, fairly high level. Um, the Briar Patch, which at varying times in history has uh, shifted between Federation control, Klingon control, all these different types of things, is an area that is largely, even in this day and age, uncharted and part of the reason for that is the way the nebula functions and some newer technologies and in specific you find this out this is why he was very happy to hear about tanari he 
had not heard uh, Lieutenant Nilo's name previously because she wasn't part of the big event that took place last season. But he has, since while being on the ship and since doing more research on the issue, even more jazzed and can, is a lot more vocally interactive with you, Lieutenant, because they're here to help get the Briar Patch mapped. They want to know what's here, and the reason for that is it has traditionally for two, almost 300 years, been a place where criminals, pirates, thieves, and any number of skullduggerous individuals have chosen to hide and go into because it's so hard to scan. But some of the work that has been done on the DC and with your variant ships and triangulation and in recent additional sensor work that has been done, the patches and fixes that Lieutenant Neelam and uh, Tanari have done with Aslan Station and the various teams that are there. That work is disseminating through the galactic scientific and engineering communities. They are going to, they are there to assist with outfitting equipment that's located at station or outpost 39 with the similar sensors to what you have on your shuttles and outfit the sensor array on that station with the types of sensors that you have on aslan station and get the that station which has been abandoned for a while but is now being brought back up to operational status as a hub for mapping operations and they're going to get a lot of shuttles and uh, runabouts like the eagle and they're going to start doing some high intensity like high high velocity volume mapping of the briar patch the reason why there's any kind of secrecy about it is they don't want bad guys to find out so they try to stop them once they're operational they're not really worried about it because once they can see what's coming at them then the bad guys are much less of a threat, right? So they want to get operational before it's widely known. But the reason why the DC was actually selected was simply because the two subject matter experts are on the DC, and you actually have working prototypes and functional uh, usage of the exact technology that they now want to employ to do this other type of mission. So with that information, I'm going to authorize both Neilon and Tanari to share the underpinnings of the subspace modification stuff we've been doing to find Epsilon without telling them what we're looking for. You okay. Know? And if it does come up, we'll say there's this ship that attacks Zunia using this sub rogue subspace weaponry. We're hoping that you can see if that helps anything with the subspace mapping of the Briar Patch Nebula because of the interference. All right. Sounds good. And mostly to see if Mogra picks up on anything subspacey and has any insight that she can contribute. For her part, Mogra is there. Uh, in the course of the week, she pretty much says, I'm not a subject matter expert in these in most of these types of things, but she's the representative they sent to assist the house. That's why she's here. She's not from this house. She feigns no expertise in these types of matters, but she definitely has a scientific mind, so she does lend help when when necessary as far as talking about topics or discussing phenomenon. She has general science knowledge, and so if a physics topic comes up or, or something specific to ship design, she can certainly apply the scientific method to helping come to resolution. It's just not her matter of focus and expertise. Because of some technical issues, this episode was recorded in two separate sessions. We now join the second session in progress. So now that the tour has been completed, people are settling into the travel, uh, that their their routines, standard ship functions. For the audience, our ship's captain and XO have done an amazing job. They've put together duty rosters. So at various times during any session, as long as we know what time of day it is, we know, generally speaking, where NPCs might be, who might be on the bridge, who might not be on the bridge. Really appreciate your back-of-the-house efforts there. Great job with that, Commander Tobor and Lieutenant Commander Ocean. 
that's phenomenal. And there's been input from other folks along the way. And these are the kinds of things that when you have a great group of players, GMs can uh, really lean into focusing on the story elements and the adventures that they want to place because some of that running of the ship and and, uh, filling out the lifeblood of a ship, which is how it operates, is really player-centric stuff. And I love the fact that we have the, the group, the cast, that digs into that type of thing works out really well and i look forward to and encourage more and as we are going through the tail end of season two and uh, i josh and i are starting to prep season three that will definitely uh be rewarded and remunerated in multiple types of ways look forward to that when we roll into season three all right so continuing on with the travel nearly everyone on the senior staff has more things on their plate than anybody should possibly have. But during this nearly week of travel from the world where they picked up the Klingon delegation to where they're headed, that being the Briar Patch, uh, there are multiple things that um, our crew has the ability to work on in no particular order. I'm going to start with Lieutenant Tanari. Uh, Mm -hmm. Dave, uh, there are several tasks that you were looking at uh, and trying to carry on. Uh, among them, what is the first thing that you are looking to do? The first thing is trying to adapt the Epsilon sensors to the ship sensors. Okay. Let's see here. I have an extended task chart that already has this ready to go. This particular calibration task has a difficulty of three it has a resistance of three it has a magnitude of three and it has a work track of 15. and let's see and just as a reminder for those who've been tuning in we have converted our player characters to second edition but we are not yet operating in the totality of second edition rules so we are as of today still utilizing first edition extended task rules that will be one of the things that we switch over when we conclude season two while while season two while season three when we will use the full second edition rules will not begin airing until 2024 we are recording in september though most of you won't hear this until probably october so it's only a couple months away before you see the season two full set of rules on the show uh but we're still digesting those and because we're in the middle of several of these things we didn't want to change midstream because that might be a bit jarring and a bit more challenging and less consistent for the with that you've got a week so i'm going to definitely say we can get in about two different attempts on this depending on how you do but definitely you can get some work in and we'll see how far we go with each magnitude what you will there will be basically thresholds or or things that will happen part one is really just figuring out the, the 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 details getting the getting the mechanical work done. Everything is wired the right way. Everything's flowing the right way. Those tests go well. That's magnitude one. Uh, Then magnitude two is getting your calibration so it's right in general. And then magnitude three is just a a proper field test to make sure there are no bugs in the system. So that's narratively the three thresholds that we're doing. So within this week... Pun intended? (laughs) Yes. Yes, indeed. With me every pun always intended even the ones i didn't see coming so with that how would you like to approach the issue today okay first of all can you remind me what where we're standing in terms of momentum and threat Ooh, that is a fantastic question i'd love to say i wrote that down and maybe i did hang on one second let me used up he used up all your threat And I think we had a special advantage that gave us seven momentum. That is entirely possible. Adam, far be it for me to to tell you you're wrong, but I'm going to say there's a good possibility you're you're wrong. Let's see. You Um, think? This is why he's here, so. Uh I, I appreciate you stepping out for the crew and really trying to make that happen. Dang it. Where did I? Why don't I ever write these things down in places where I can find them? I know I wrote that down, too. Explain the ADHD. I I would love to. That's probably just me being stupid, though. Did you screenshot (laughs) it? If I did, the challenge is where did I save it? 
did I put it in the chat somewhere? I don't think I did. That would have been smart if I did, but I don't think I did. Jokes for days. Let's see. What in doubt we can just reset to 10 threat and three momentum. I'm going to say I hadn't spent a whole lot of threat, but I also don't think you gave us a whole lot of threat. No, actually you did, because there's some questions, if I remember from Ogre. Tell you what, I will go with the three momentum, but I think I'm only going to go with eight threat. How's that? Does that, that sound good? Okay. You're on mute. Go on. That probably explains why he didn't respond earlier when I made some kind of silly comment, but I said, I'm pretty sure you only had three. Three threat? Oh, yeah. Tell, tell you what, I'll cut it to six then. <laughs> Eight was five. <laughs> nah, I'm fine, with, I'm fine with six. We always give you plenty anyway. <laughs> yeah, you, you always do, and I know it's coming. You want me to have six. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I don't need a heads up for this one. I, I don't need a. I don't. I don't need a. I, I don't need any gifts on this one. Oh, um, no, I missed my year. mouth. Yeah. Well, let's see here. Yeah. So that's where we are. We are at three momentum, six threat to get us started. All right. And you said it was difficulty three. Mm-hmm. All right. And this, the first task you said was what again? Just getting the hardware in there correctly, okay. making sure everything's wired correctly, the right conduits are plugged into the right conduits so there won't be overloads. No extended complication range on this one, but no overloads, things integrate well. If you have to shift power to and from, it doesn't create other issues, break down siphon power inadvertently mm -hmm. from life support or other systems, things like that. Basically, I'm giving you ideas of what, what, what complications might come up when you roll 20. You know who's rolling. Yeah, yeah. So Dave, since we're still using the uh, first edition extended task as chief engineer, you get the role ability of having your engineering team trait that will reduce difficulty by one. So that reduces it to two. Tell you what, I will spend... What do we decide on the momentum again? There are three. Three? I'll spend... Two momentum and one threat to get two extra dice. And since this is putting together equipment, I'm going to assume that this is control engineering. Mm -hmm. So that will be my difficulty of 14. And um, well, I'm assuming my Epsilon Species Detection Focus will come in to play? Yes. Okay. Let's see what we get. All right. Wow. A five, an eight, and a three. So that is four successes. You should uh, roll, have been rolling one more die, Dave because you bought two extra. You are correct. Thank you. That is an 11. So it's five successes. Sweet. All right. That's going to get you two, three momentum for immediate mm -hmm. spend. How would you like to spend those? Or would you like to spend those? Or would you like those to go to the pool? Yeah. What's the momentum spend to Well, so right now... You have to roll your two plus engineering number of challenge dice. And I also. And then we'll spend the momentum after we see what your roll is. But okay. Piercing two is. Two plus an engineering. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see what we get. All right. We have. Four with two deltas. So that's six total? No, I got a two, a five, and a five. Okay. There is a resistance of three. Are you going to spend momentum to eliminate the resistance? So first off, yes. you you may wish to spend one momentum to re-roll one or more of the dice that 
did not succeed. Yeah, how much momentum is that? Uno. Uh, one. Okay, because I am an Endorian, I have intense. I spent threat, so I will spend that one bonus momentum to re-roll those three dice. Okay. I got a one, a two, and a two. Perfect, so that's five more. So you roll seven dice, Dave? Did you roll seven dice? I roll six. I have a four engineering. Oh, okay. So you got a one, a two, a two, a previous two, and a five, and a five? Yes. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. You're currently at nine work with the resistance three. So we do want to spend one momentum to reduce the resistance by two. Okay. Uh, So that would mean eight work would get through to the track, which is good because it'll give us a breakthrough and take us from 15 down to seven. Correct. And so we just generated three. Yep. You spent your bonus one, Uh spent another one. We've got two, that's five momentum back up. Okay, so that leaves us with three momentum. It should be, if I'm doing my math rightly. I got four momentum when you were all done with that. Okay. Is that in, oh, because of Dave's uh, bonus, got it. Correct. Mm -hmm. You took it away and then, but it was a bonus one, so I basically never added it to take it away, which is why I'm counting four. So, yep. Yep, we're good, we're at four. You've got eight work done, that gets you your first breakthrough. So you are, everything's in, it's set up correctly, the seams are smooth, connections are good, solid, no complications. And your team's pretty pleased with their work over the first day or two of the trip. And you get a second attempt to get at this in just a moment. We're gonna shift to, um, hang on a second, I lost my screen. Hey, make sure you treat those dice nice. Give them a little extra polishing or something. Yeah. Yeah, I switched from metal to resin dice, so we'll see how it goes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, maybe that. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's an uh, environment. Use the stuff that isn't dug out of the ground. <laughs> All right. We're going to shift our, our, our focus over to our science department. And my understanding is Lieutenant Neela had been working on anthropological studies on the the Zunian people trying to just see what makes them tick, how that connects with other investigations, basically to just get a, a more holistic view of the people. Does that track with what, what, what you were planning thinking or do we need to add any additional pieces to that to that investigation? That does sound right. I do have some information already and I want to say that there may have been something else related that I was asked to look at by our captain, but I don't have anything specifically written down. No, from my perspective, the you when we were at Zunia, we essentially tried to download as much cultural database information as possible that they'd let us, and then now we're just kind of like going through and processing it because it's like terra quads of information. Right. And I took that as created a, a an extended task so you could get information at the various levels. So if there's time to work on it a little bit, you can say, hey, here's what I found uh, the next time we have a big board meeting. And it's OK, everybody, what do you, you know, report, report, let me know what you have, what you what you've um what you've found so the way i have this set up is an extended task with again a difficulty of three this only has a resistance of two because you have the data resistance of two is more about pulling out the pertinent pieces and then you have a magnitude of three your work track is 15 and that was it on this trip Based on the information, you have the ability to knock out one of one of the blocks of investigation on this matter. You currently have four momentum and five threat. 
I'm sorry, six. Yeah, six threat. We didn't. No, Dave, you bought threat. I'm sorry, seven threat. I did something backwards. I took it away versus putting it, putting it in. Nice try, Dave. You almost fooled me. How much momentum do we have? Four momentum. Four momentum and seven threat? Correct. Okay. So I think I want to use... Oh, it would be, I assume, a science... Yeah, that would work. Or or insight, whichever you preferred. I could see either. Okay. They're both the same, so just a matter of how I, pers- how I look at it. And I think that I want to use a threat to use bold science. Sure. <clears throat> and... I think that's it. All right. And so you're going to be rolling three dice on this? Yes. <clears throat> All right. And actually, one thing, and I did not use, Dave, we never rolled for the ship on your roll, which we probably okay. should have, because that could have added uh, additional momentum. Joe, if you want to roll, that way we can at least just add the momentum to the pool, pool if we got a success there. Well, That'd be wonderful. Joe, roll for the ship since he's the captain. Yep. That. Yep. All right, let me pull it up real quick. Uh, Let's see. Sensors. Sensor science? Uh, For for Dave's role, that would be, I would say, sensors engineering. It's sensors or engineering. No, sensors is the system. Department is uh, either... Definitely engineering, then. Engineering? Okay. Then that was a 14, and I needed a 12. So no no assist. No assist. Can't change the past. Your friends on the Michael Collins, they're doing their absolute best right now. So we will see later this month whether they're successful. So one of the things I'm personally interested in with looking into this is that we previously learned that the Zunians are older than Tethys as far Mm -hmm. as the artifacts that are related. So that's one thing that I'm interested in finding how, if it was something that moved from, from the Zunians to like an infection kind of thing or something like that. And actually kind of like like where it originated and where it progressed to, did it start one place, go to the other, or are they two kind of separate emergences situation? Okay. And Lee, one of the other things I just came up with not too long ago from the hologram of the story from Tethys and the the dimensional wormhole thing from the other universe thing we don't know of mm-hmm. I want to check that versus the Zunian's strange radiation nebula is that sure. the aftermath of that whole incident and stuff So that's what I'm also having them look at, study the radiation and what it compares to on Tethys and in and around the area. Fair enough. And no, we're never going to catch them. I actually had that discussion with somebody, Dave, that now that I figured the sweet spot for threat, I've realized that Michael's... My, Michael's record is probably very safe with me because now that I know how to spend threat and I can have fun with it, I I am too willing to have fun to, to ever let it get there. I never see 20 anymore. I never see. And I used to see 20s all the time, like 20, 25. I got to 30 on a couple occasions, but not anymore. I can't do it. <laughs> I'm just I, 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 I'm addicted to spending threat. <laughs> Gonna have to face it, I'm addicted to threat. All right, with all apologies to Robert Palmer and the, and the guitar playing ladies. <laughs> <laughs>